My name is Jamie Lester, and Kenan asked me to come this morning to talk about collaboration within higher education itself. Um, I, my background is in education. I'm a social scientist, um, not a science expert or anyone that works in technology. But what I do is focus very, um, in, in my research, on um, colleges and universities. I'm an organizational theorist, and what I'm always interested in is culture and context and how we can change our colleges and universities to do some of the things that we've talked about today, particularly around innovation. So I was very interested in Derek's comments um, as it applied to the, to the K through 12 environment. So let me begin with a common scenario that we see in higher education, and I imagine you see this in your organization as well. We have a typical university and its leader or leadership discovers that students are failing developmental math courses. Retention managers, to discuss the issue and try to come up with a solution. Meetings are convened, and they talk, and they talk, and they talk, and they talk some more, right? And nothing really seems to get accomplished. I've been in many meetings like this, and part of it is that faculty like to talk. I'm a faculty person. I like to talk. We like to critique. We like to be thorough. Student affairs professionals, they want to act. They want to move. Other managers, they want to focus on the individual. They want to help the student that comes into their office that says, I'm failing develop developmental math. I'm in math 10, which is, in community colleges, algebra. I need to get to math 100. That's two courses away. You know, in this scenario, a faculty might, an individual faculty person might create a study group. They might uh, move their curriculum around or try some different innovations in their individual classroom. And maybe even uh, uh, you know, student affairs professionals or academic advisors create some math tutoring on the side. But the problem is that there's no communication across these efforts, and there's no integration across these efforts. They're done basically in isolation. So what's important about this story is that we see these scenarios across institutions, four-year institutions, two-year institutions, public, private, religious-based institutions, this scenario happens in, over, in all of our 5,000 higher education institutions in this country. It also occurs across different initiatives. This was developmental math, but you name an initiative, you name something that we need to think about and to resolve in our institutions, and these scenarios, this scenario applies. We're challenged to find new ways to overcome the barriers and realizing the potential of collaboration. Yet we know that it is many advantages. So some of the work that I've used is by Mormon, and Mormon says, innovation occurs when different perspectives and knowledge bases are joined, resulting in the reframing of problems and solutions that would not have been likely or possible from within one perspective. We know from study after study that bureaucratic and hierarchical organizations reinforce routine practices following very strict policies and procedures. No hot lunches when we have those tests. In Virginia, they're called SOLs, um, and they take all day. We know that if people are focused on these routines, that they will not question ineffective practices and policies, and they won't work to innovate. We also know that matrix organizations, uh, those that have cross-functional structures, and team-based organizations are encourage more interaction, information sharing, communication, collective problem solving, and that result in innovation and learning. So what I'm going to share with you today are two things. One is the challenges to collaboration that I have found and my co-author Adriana Kizara found within higher education institutions. And these are very much interrelated challenges. They speak to the context, they speak to the culture, and they absolutely speak to the structure as well as the history of our colleges and universities. And then I'm going to briefly talk to you about a model, that, a proven model that we have found when we went to a variety of institutions of higher education who were known and who were effective at collaborating. And I'm very happy to say that my institution is one of those, which is one of the reasons I work there. <laughs> um, and that's a three-stage model, and I'll just briefly touch upon it. There's certainly more details I can talk about um, in our less formal part of the, the day. So the main challenges to collaborations are internal and external. Internal, we have colleges and universities that have more diverse students, additional technological demands, increased need for security and safety, and new skills needed for student success. 
but our processes have not really evolved. We really continue with outmoded structures that started hundreds of years ago when our universities were very small, they were somewhat simple in terms of their mission and their focus, and they were exclusive. There were a very small number of people who had access to these institutions. And now we have community colleges, for example, that are open access institutions. We also have things like specialization and professionalization of faculty, as well as of administrators. We've seen a growing number of professional administrators on our college campuses. No longer are leaders of our college campuses coming through faculty ranks. Some of them come from business and industry, which was unprecedented 50 years ago. We also have discipline and departmental silos. Faculty are trained and socialized within specific disciplines. Often, when I think about these graduate students that I worked with in the sciences, they don't get out of their labs, right? They stay in their labs. That is where they're socialized. They are trained to be faculty within those contexts. Then they go be faculty in those contexts. They don't necessarily know how or can work across the disciplines. We have reward systems that focus very much on specific forms of productivity. We have academic capitalism. I encourage you to read the work of Sheila Slaughter and Gary Rhodes. Faculty are rewarded for productivity. That means publishing in peer-reviewed places. That means writing grants. That often does not mean partnering with schools unless it results in money or doing the kind of work to partner in the community to some of the activities that we've talked about today. We also have very bureaucratic and hierarchical administrative structures and clashes between subcultures. So in my story, you know, one of the, one of the issues I, um, what I often see is, is this in meetings of how people function. There are norms of how we function. Our norms of how we come to solutions can be vastly different from what? From an academic discipline to a student affairs group, from one discipline to another. So all of these work against collaboration. They create divides uh, rather than commonalities. They support and reward individual work. And they, they work against a collective culture. Now externally, we have pressures as well. And there are a variety of them. And when I teach courses on organizational studies in higher education, we have a whiteboard full of the various different stakeholders within higher education that myself and my graduate students come up with. But one that's certainly on my mind a lot is the relationship between higher education and society. And we very much have a redefining of what of the public good. Our social contract as institutions, both public and private, is being redefined as we speak. We're often asking, who do we serve? What is our mission? And our social contract itself is in question. Let me give you an example. I don't think anyone in this room doesn't realize that state funding for higher education has gone down dramatically. But I did a quick look at some national data yesterday. And the most recent data, this is comparing 2005 to 2011, is that state appropriations per full-time equivalent student. So if you count two part-time students as one, or one full-time student as one, has gone down an average of 12.5%. An average of 12.5%. Some of those numbers are into the 30%. But this picture, if you're not thinking it's bleak, think about what's going to happen next year when the stimulus funds are no longer there. Many states supplemented the way that they funded public higher education by using the stimulus funds. So if your institutions have not experienced a decrease in funding, they will experience a decrease in funding next year. But what we know is that without intention and design, over 50% of collaborations fail. What we value matters, what we believe matters, how we structure work matters. And the good news is, in spite of all of these challenges, there is a way forward. So what Adrian and I found is a three-stage model. Um, in stage one is called building commitment. And the focus here is on ideas and information from a variety of sources, both internal and external, in order to create messages around promoting collaboration. One of, one of the um, external entities that has served as being very essential within promoting collaboration on some college campuses is the National Science Foundation. So when institutions are interested in academic capitalism and they want their faculty to write grants, and NSF says, you must have collaborative grants, right? You need to have co-PIs, you need to work across various partners, 
that sends a very strong message to institutions that they have to consider what that means and examine their structures in order to make those kinds of things possible. Well, what happens in this is convincing members of the campus of the importance of collaborative work, using networks um, of those in positions of authority to communicate the new collaborative values, um, and those external messages, and interpreting those external messages in order to support collaboration and learning. What we found in our work is that faculty and staff describe stories of failed efforts time and time again of trying to create collaboration. And the main factor was there wasn't a case for why this needed to happen. But if you can do that, if you can build this message, create a discourse of collaboration on a college campus, you can move to stage two, which is solidifying that commitment to collaboration. Because while talking about collaboration is great, and it's nice to hear, it's not action. And so in stage two comes the commitment of primarily senior administrators. Now, as a person who's also done a lot of work on social activism and grassroots leadership on college campuses, I fought this finding time and time again because I didn't want to think that leadership made such a significant difference, but in fact that they do. So what leaders need to do is to revise campus mission statements um, to make sure that the new mission and vision creates this priority of collaboration on campus, um, as well as speak about and, and redesign reward structures. And the third stage is sustaining, and that includes redesigning and integrating structures and processes and providing those rewards to support collaboration. Talk to any assistant professor who's on the tenure track, and they will tell you that first author or single author, at least in the social sciences, peer-reviewed articles are the gold standard. And in the sciences, I, I, won't, I won't claim to know what, what the situation is there. Some of you can speak to that. But we certainly know that tenure and promotion committees look at those kinds of things. So we need to think through those processes in order to truly be collaborative. But I'll end there um, and read a quote from a provost at one of our institutions, our collaborative institutions. This person said, the problem is that we keep trying to force collaborative innovations into a structure and culture that supports individual work. So we must be intentional. We must value collaboration. Let me say it again. We must value collaboration, and we must change our structures, our cultures, and our processes to promote collaboration in higher education. <laughs>